Summary of Clay by James Joyce Maria, a middle-aged woman who has never been married and works at a charity laundry in Dublin, thinks about how excited she is to go out that night as she finishes her job. She gets ready for the women's tea, which is her last job of the day before going to Joe Donnelly's family's house to celebrate Halloween. Joe was a child when Maria took care of him, so he thinks of her as a second mother. He's asked her to move in with him many times, but Maria is used to her life at the laundry, so she always says no. Maria is liked at the laundry because she is kind and can stop fights before they start. The lady of the laundry calls her a peacemaker. As the women come in for tea, Maria serves them tea and a traditional Halloween cake called barmbrack. In the middle of a lot of laughing and joking, two of the women make fun of Maria's age and the fact that she doesn't have a husband. Maria laughs along with everyone else, even though she feels disappointed shyness and awkward. When Maria is finally done with her work for the night and can get away from the women's chatter, she goes to her bedroom to change her clothes for the Donnelly's Hallow Eve party. When she looks at her body in the mirror, she likes how it used to look and also likes how it looks now. Maria takes a Dublin tram to a cake shop, where she gets a bag of many small cakes for the Donnelly children. She then goes to a second shop, where she hopes to find a special treat for Joe and Mrs. Donnelly. In the second shop, the woman behind the counter is annoyed that Maria is taking so long to choose a cake, so she asks Maria harshly if she is buying a wedding cake. Maria is ashamed, but she shrugs it off and takes a piece of plum cake with her as she walks away. An old guy offers Maria a seat on the crowded tram ride from the second cake shop to the Donnelly's house. He talks to her in a nice way about the cakes she is bringing and how nice it is to give treats to children. Maria seems to like being with him. When Maria finally gets to her destination, the Donnellys give her a warm welcome. She gives the Donnelly children and two girls from next door who came for the holiday celebrations their cakes. Maria can't find the plum cake she bought for Joe and his wife, so she figures that the old man made her so confused that she must have lost the cake on the tram. This makes her feel shame, vexation, and disappointment. Joe tells Maria that it's okay that she dropped the cake. The holiday celebrations and casual talk start. Joe tells Maria a story about his boss that Maria doesn't understand, but she doesn't ask him to explain. Instead, she tries to show support and understanding by showing that she understands. Soon after, Maria brings up the fact that Joe and his brother Alfie had a fight and suggests that they try to get back together. Mrs. Donnelly agrees with Maria, but Joe doesn't want to talk about the subject and cuts off the chat. The two girls who live next door plan games for the group to play on Halloween. In one game, everyone wears a mask and has to put their hand on something that will tell them their fate. When one of the girls is playing, she finds a ring, which is a sign that she will soon get married. The group then tries to get Maria to play, and when she does, she picks a lump of clay that represents her upcoming death. The other people in the group talk uncomfortably as Maria stands there with her hand still on the clay. She looks confused and blindfolded. She doesn't know what just happened, but she knows she should choose something else, so she puts her hand on a Bible, which means she should go into a nun. At the end of the day, before the kids go to bed, Mrs. Donnelly asks Maria to sing for the group. Maria sings an aria even though she isn't sure what to do. Maria keeps singing the first verse, which is about dreaming of wealth and luxury, instead of the second line, which is about dreaming of suitors and love. No one says anything about how she repeats herself, but Joe's eyes well up with tears because he seems to understand her pain. About the author James Joyce was born in Ireland to Irish Catholic parents, and he grew up in the Dublin neighborhood of Rathgar. He went to school with the Jesuits and later got a degree in modern languages from University College, Dublin. After he graduated in 1902, he went to Paris and studied medicine for a short time. However, when his mother got sick in 1903, he quickly moved back to Dublin. During this trip, he met Nora Barnacle, a woman from Galway with whom he would spend the rest of his life, even though they didn't get married until 1931. Joyce went into self-imposed exile because he didn't like the political and religious turmoil in his country in the late 1800s and early 1900s. 
He only went back to Dublin four times for the rest of his life and lived in places like Trieste, Pola, and Zurich. Dubliners, a book of short stories that came out in 1914, was Joyce's first big work. As Joyce kept writing, the American poet Ezra Pound gave him advice. Eventually, it was Pound who got Joyce's books A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, 1916, and Ulysses, 1922, published. Joyce was known for his unique, modernist writing style, which got more and more difficult to understand as he wrote more. Some people think that Joyce's more avant-garde stream of consciousness writing in Ulysses, 1922, and Finnegan's Wake, 1939, which are more realistic and less direct than Dubliners, were based on Dubliners. In 1941, Joyce died in Zurich, Switzerland after having surgery for an ulcer. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.